okay guys welcome back so in this video I'll be talking about another concept on the equilibrium of motion or the equilibrium of an object under three forces so what if an object uh, if what if three forces are to be applied to an object in a manner like this now I'll take the object like this right take the object like this I'll put a force P in this direction right P in this direction and Q in this direction now that the same the, the actually the action where the force occurs is at the center of mass Q in this direction and R in this direction right and the angles between these are this angle is gamma right this angle is alpha and this angle is beta all right so what happens is i'll separate this into a point mass into a point mass so the forces will be like this so this is p this is q and this is R. <coughs> now this is alpha, this is beta, and this is gamma. Right? So what if an object is under equilibrium under these forces? What can you say about them? Uh, about these three forces? Alright, so what I'll do here is actually I will construct a triangle, right? A triangle, you may wonder how. What I will do is now I will draw a parallel line going through P, going through this point, through the head of P, so that the line that is parallel is parallel to Q, right? A line parallel to Q going through the head of P like this, right? Right? That is parallel to Q and equal to Q. So this length, this length, now, now this length, this length is the magnitude, this length is the magnitude of Q and this length is also the magnitude of Q, so this is parallel to Q, so this will be Q, right? And I'll extend this, uh, the value of R, right? Value of R like that, so that this length is equal to R, this length is equal to R, and this length is along R, so this will be also R, right? So the triangle will be like this, so this is P. Right? This is Q. This is Q. And this is R. Right? So, the angle between Q and R, angle between Q and R is alpha, so the angle will be this angle, right? So, the angle between, uh, I could say that, the angle, <coughs> the angle between two forces is such that the two forces should meet each other, two forces should divide from each other. So, if there are two angle, two forces like this, this P, this is Q, the angle should be this one, or if this is P and this is Q, the angle should be this one, right? Either the forces should be diverging from some point, or the forces should be converging to some point, so the angle between those forces is these angles. So in this sense, in this sense, one force is converging to a uh, point and the other force is diverging. So what I'll do is I'll extend this force. <coughs> I'll extend this force so as this force now is diverging from this point and R is already diverging. So these two forces are diverging. So the angle between these two forces is this angle, alpha. Similarly, angle between P and Q, P and Q here, is gamma I have taken it as gamma so P is here, Q is here so I, what I will do is I will diverge P in this direction I will diverge P in this direction so the angle between P and Q is gamma now here alright gamma now here and I, angle between R and B angle between R and B has been taken as beta has been taken as beta so 
or is the conversion phase diverge what I will do is that I will diverge R from this side because I can converge it to this side right right what I will do is I will diverge R from this side so that this angle is now theta right so this is a simple triangle so if this is alpha <coughs> this should be 180 minus alpha 180 minus alpha right if this is beta, this should be 180 minus beta. And if this is gamma, this is 180 minus gamma. Right? This is 180 minus gamma. So what I can write is a triangle like this, right? I can draw it separately. This is P. This is 180 minus alpha. This is Q. Right, this is Q. This angle is 180 minus beta. So you can understand what I'm going to do here, right? The way I'm drawing the angles and the sides. So this is R, and this angle is 180 minus L. So what I'll do is I'll put the sine theorem to this triangle. So if I'm not well versed in trigonometry, I invite you to watch my video on sine angles and then come back here. So, for the triangle of this triangle, I can say P divided by sine 180 minus alpha is equal to Q divided by sine 180 minus beta is equal to R divided by sine 180 minus gamma. Right? So 180 minus alpha, sine 180 minus alpha is sine alpha, sine 180 minus beta is sine beta, and sine 180 minus gamma is sine gamma. So I will write it again. So P divided by sine alpha is equal to Q divided by sine beta is equal to R divided by sine gamma. So this is a very important relationship in solving equations regarding the equilibrium of uh, an object in under three forces. So this was first introduced by a person called Lamy. So this is popularly called the Lamy's theorem. So if you have forces like this, Lamy's theorem, welcome to Lamy's theorem. Lamy's theorem. Right? Lamy's theorem. So if you have forces like this, P, Q, and R like this, so this should be any three forces, right? Any three angles. So I'm taking angular so that <coughs> we can derive a common relationship, right? P Q R like this. So the angle between <coughs> Q R and alpha is alpha. This is beta, and this is gamma. We can say P divided by P divided P divided by the sine value of the angle that is facing P sine alpha is equal to Q divided by Q divided by the angle the sine value of the angle that is facing Q sine beta Q divided by sine beta is equal to R divided by R divided by the sine value of the angle that is facing R is R sine beta R equal to each other so P divided by sine alpha equals Q divided by sine beta equals R divided by sine gamma in the uh, instance in which like this, right? So if we have some forces, uh, we have P and Q and R, so we have angles, so we can find either an angle, <coughs> angle between the two forces, or uh, the forces, uh, if you are given two forces and the three angles, or if you are given any angles and two, fo and two forces, you can find the other force. So there's a very important theorem. So in the next video, I'll be talking about an example in which I'll explain a practical example of how Lamy's theorem can be used in solving problems. So, see you then.